So I guess it seems like you're saying that, you know, first you had to you know, get an appreciation for the cigars, but then once you, you know, you learn as much as possible about the cigars, because you can just, and correct me if I'm wrong, you can just have your own, your own line of cigars without actually having the cigar lounge. So, okay, yes. once you get to the point where it's like, okay, I think we didn't perfect this cigar, because I'm assuming that, you know, it's, this is not an overnight process. Like you said, it's going to no. take years and years and years to yes. uh, uh, refine your cigar. But then, okay, once you get to the point where it's like, okay, I, I, we, we got it. We got something that I think they're going to enjoy. Why not just put out the, the line of cigars? How do you get to the point where it's like, okay, no, now, now I need the cigar lounge? Well, so for me with the lounge, the concept came with the lounge because I always, I, when you're smoking, when I'm smoking a good cigar, um, I want to be comfortable. Right. I want to sit down. I want to be able to, you know, engage in, in conversation. I want to be able to listen to maybe some something that's going to put me in a different place from the pressures of the outside world when I'm not smoking a cigar. Right. So right. the lounge came from me being coming from the background of if I'm selling, some, if I'm not going to put, I'm not going to. I guess you would call me OCD, but everything has to be in line with um, what it is I'm doing. So right. I'm sitting. So if I'm sitting out smoking a cigar and I and I'm in a particular place and I'm spending a lot of money and I don't have anywhere that I can comfortably smoke a cigar, I know there's a need for. I know there's a need for that. For sure. So how my brain operates, I'm all about you know growing. I'm all about you know educating myself, being more knowledgeable about you know, what it is I'm getting involved with. And that's where the lounge actually came. The idea from the lounge came from. Okay. You know, cause it's something I'm going to do anyway. I'm going to smoke cigars. Right. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to play golf. I'm going to, you know, that's, that's what I'm going to do. So how do you differentiate or make your, you know, your lounge better than I guess the competitors or what's out there? Cause like you said, you think about this from a business standpoint and getting a return on your investment. So now, yeah. You know, obviously, it's competition out there. You have the Churchill. You have yeah. these other different uh, lounges. What do you do, or how do you go about the process to say, okay, I'm gonna make mine, I'm gonna make mine different in this way to kind of separate myself from the competition in that way? So the way I was able to do that is I separated myself from anybody that's doing this is because you know I come from the bottom, right, right, and I would always say, man, it don't take, you know, if you if you if you have all this money and you got people that's working for you. Man, you got to take care of your people. Definitely. You okay. have to take care of your people. There's nothing more embarrassing than going to a quality bar and establishment and there's poor service. No, and you're right about reason, that. And the only reason the service is poor is because it is one of two reasons why the service is poor. Either you have poor leadership or the people that are working there aren't quality people. Okay. So how my brain operates, I'm knowing what caused the establishment to be poor. I'm saying, all right, so if we take away, I know, I know as a leader, um, I will put, I will put my leadership skills against anybody in the world and what it is I do. Right. And, and so now it's getting the people that's on my team to know that they don't have to worry about the pressures that they might have to worry about when they're working at another establishment because we're going to take care of all of that. And the only thing I ask them to do is to provide the grand quality, the grand service that anyone will ever experience when they walk through the door. For sure. For sure. Oh, so and I that, say, and all right, we got, we have two rules for my, for my staff. Rule number one is quality service is why I hired you. Yep. Rule number two, remember rule number one.